and I'm delighted to see the MICTA ambassadors here this morning in the front row. And I also acknowledge the presence of other ambassadors and members of our diplomatic network here. And Vice-Chancellor Ian Young, thank you so much for hosting this seminar here at ANU. Nearly two years ago, five countries came together through a meeting of their foreign ministers in the margins of the United Nations General Assembly in New York to form a new partnership. At first blush, a somewhat unlikely grouping, MICTA, made up of the nations of Mexico, Indonesia, Korea, Turkey and Australia. We are nations of influence in our respective regions, geographically. While each nation has different, although complementary, priorities, it is evident that MICTA brings greater weight together as a group than what could be achieved by acting alone. For example, the combined GDP of MICTA countries is over $5.8 trillion, about 8% of the world's economy, and this share is expected to grow. Our combined population is around 530 million, about 8% of the world's population. We're all members of the United Nations, the G20, the World Trade Organization, the Global Partnership for Development Cooperation. We are like-minded on many global issues and we're all active contributors on the global stage. Yet there's a diverse range of geographic, thematic and religious groupings in which three or more of the MICTA countries are also prominent contributors which we find to be one of the group's great strengths. For Australia, MICTA marks a significant addition to the type and composition of international partnerships we've traditionally prioritised. The complexities of the modern world demand Australia develop new and innovative ways of pursuing our interests. Countries now have to give priority to solving issues that transcend borders and regions and we must work with others who share similar foreign policy priorities. This is why Australia is part of MICTA, a new partnership that has potential to be a significant and positive force for good. MICTA members are marked by our diversity, but we share characteristics that make us practical partners. We have a common interest in promoting an open, free, rules-based international order. We are all democracies. We believe in open trade and economic development. Our economies are the 12th, 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th largest in the world and growing at a faster rate than many in the top 10. Goldman Sachs has predicted that Mexico may well become the fifth largest economy by 2050. PwC assesses that on current growth rates, Indonesia will be the seventh largest economy by 2030 and fourth by 2050. Turkey is also likely to be in the top 10. Australia and Korea aspire to be so. So MICTA provides a forum to exchange views and canvas possible solutions to common challenges. It's a forum that hopes to shape international opinion in ways that benefit us all. Last month in Seoul, my fellow MICTA foreign ministers and I discussed the most serious challenges we're facing. The joint communique issued after the meeting reveals the range of issues discussed and agreed upon, including counter-terrorism. No country is immune from the scourge of terrorism and the phenomenon of foreign terrorist fighters. Terrorism is now more global, more complex, more dangerous than ever before. Fueled by hate, the terrorist organisations such as Daesh are attracting thousands of citizens from across the globe to join these murderous causes. During the MICTA foreign ministers meeting, we learned from Korean authorities that a South Korean teenager had attempted to enter Syria with the intention of joining Daesh. We shared experiences, ideas and information. I detailed how Australia faces this same real threat. Since becoming Foreign Minister, I have cancelled around 120 Australian passports to prevent Australian citizens travelling to Syria and Iraq 
to become foreign terrorist fighters in that conflict. Our joint communique explicitly expressed our agreement to stand together against the common threat of terrorism and recognise the importance of governments and communities strengthening social cohesion to meet the challenge of violent extremism. We highlighted the importance of preventing and addressing the issue of foreign terrorist fighters. Over the past two years, MICTA have issued a number of joint press releases on issues as diverse as Ebola, North Korea's nuclear program, the downing of Malaysian Airlines MH17, global health, global governance, even on International Women's Day. Our UN ambassadors in New York and Geneva meet regularly to discuss the contribution that MICTA can make to strengthening global governance. MICTA members are also concerned about the global economy. Australia wants to promote global prosperity through openness to trade and helping drive business growth. And we find that MICTA can be utilised as a powerful advocate for the benefits of liberalised trade and investment. We have strong trade, investment and tourism linkages between the MICTA members already, and there's plenty of opportunity to expand this. Last year alone, other MICTA countries, other than Australia, so that makes it the MICT, invested around $25 billion in Australia. Visitors from MICTA countries spend approximately 5.8 per cent of the total expenditure of overseas visitors here in Australia. And of Australians travelling overseas for short-term visits, nearly 13 per cent travel to Mexico, Indonesia, Korea or Turkey. I'm also working with my MICTA colleagues to test whether our development cooperation is meeting the contemporary challenges the world faces. I'm committed to making continuous improvements to our aid program. Recently, we established the Innovation Exchange, where we identify innovative solutions to otherwise intractable development issues, trial them, and if they work, we scale them up and apply them in our region. But MICTA opens up new opportunities to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the programs we deliver. We can play a bridging role between developed and developing countries. In coming months, there are two critical global negotiations on development cooperation. In Ethiopia, in July, countries will come together to discuss ways to finance how the world tackles poverty. In New York, in September, the nations of the world will seek to agree on the successes to the Millennium Development Goals. These are big issues for Australia, and we, along with other MICTA members, have been a vocal contributor to these discussions. Our participation in these meetings provides an opportunity to combine our voices and support the issues and the international institutions which promote our interests and values. The value of MICTA as a forum is reflected by how often the foreign ministers meet, three times a year, on the margins of the UN General Assembly lead this week, on the margins of the G20, and especially convene MICTA foreign ministers meeting. And this gives the group a unique and powerful momentum, building deep and lasting connections. And I have appreciated the opportunity to get to know my foreign minister counterparts from Mexico, Indonesia, Korea and Turkey. A very unique opportunity that is difficult to share with others. This September, Korea will hand over to Australia the position of coordinator of MICTA. And I take this opportunity to thank Korea, particularly Foreign Minister byung se for all that they've done to enhance MICTA's capacity and influence. Australia will focus on establishing practical ways of working together to achieve tangible outcomes. And I look forward to hosting my fellow MICTA foreign ministers in Australia next year. Mexico and Seoul have set a very high standard, so I intend to take the opportunity to showcase to the delegates the best of Australia's world-leading achievements in innovation, science, technology, culture, education, fashion, sport. Already MICTA members have come up with creative ways to build greater people-to-people -people links between our countries. We are exchanging diplomats. We are engaging in each other's graduate diploma courses in 
our respective departments of foreign affairs and trade. We're exchanging academics, students, journalists, so that we can understand each other better and the challenges we face. And I extend a special welcome this morning to the journalists who have travelled from Seoul, Jakarta, Ankara and Mexico City. I encourage other academics and students in Australia and other MICTA countries to continue to consider the challenges and the opportunities and areas of common interest for MICTA countries. I particularly want to thank the Australian National University and Professor Michael Wesley for agreeing to lead the MICTA academic work here at the Coral Bell School of Asia-Pacific Affairs. As MICTA continues to strengthen, I expect we will find many more opportunities to cooperate many more opportunities to have our, vo our voice heard jointly on issues of concern. Speaking alone, our voices will rarely be as strong as when we speak together. Together, our diversity creates a unique voice that can and will be a powerful advocate for global peace and prosperity. After a modest beginning with modest aspirations, we have found that there is so much that we can achieve together. And I firmly believe that MICTA will be a blueprint for others who see a partnership of like-minded but diverse countries as a positive contribution to make to global peace and security. Thank you.